I recently left my $15,000 a month cloud engineer role, and it got me thinking, what made me so valuable that companies were willing to pay me that much and even more? Now, the secret lies in mastering the right cloud skills, skills that can change the trajectory of your career, just like they did for mine. But here is the thing, most beginners approach learning the cloud all wrong. They are impatient, unfocused, and give up way too easily when things get tough. They watch endless tutorials, one after another, buy all of these Udemy courses that they don't finish, and wonder why they are not making any progress. Now, if I had done that, I wouldn't be where I am today able to leave high paying roles, knowing that I can find even better opportunities anywhere in the world. So what are these game changing cloud skills? Let me break it down for you. Now first, understand that the cloud industry is exploding. By 2028, it won't just be a disruptive technology, it will be a necessity for businesses to stay competitive. This means endless opportunities for those with the right cloud skills. When I decided to become a cloud engineer, I quit my job at a consultancy that I was working for. I bet on myself to land a new role within three months. Most people are too scared to try something new doubting their abilities to learn. Now, I don't recommend that you quit your job unless you have some savings to keep you covered for a little while and are also someone who's actually committed to making things happen for themselves. Now, at the same time, discomfort is exciting. I thrive on the challenge of mastering a new skill. And I do this every few years. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more helping you make your cloud move. When I was trying to figure out what to learn first, I came across my first challenge. Which cloud platform should I learn? There was AWS, Azure, and GCP. And I started Googling into this and decided to pursue with AWS as I knew they are the market leader, which means that they're gonna have more businesses using AWS. And it also meant that there will be more opportunities in the future. And boy, was I right. AWS is still the number one cloud platform and that's not changing anytime soon. Anyway, I recommend that before you even think about learning AWS, you need to focus on the five core fundamentals, which are the absolute building blocks on the cloud and AWS. Networking, operating systems, virtualization, databases, and security. Now, I know you are too lazy to research what these core fundamentals are, so let me explain it to you so you understand. Networking is all about how data moves around the internet. It's like the roads and highways that connect everything in the cloud. You've got to understand concepts like IP addresses, subnets, and routing. Without a solid grasp of networking, you'll be lost in the cloud world. Operating systems are the brains behind the machines. They manage all the resources and make sure everything runs smoothly. If you want to be a cloud professional, you need to know your way around Linux and Windows machines. You should also be comfortable with tasks like managing users, configuring security, and automating processes. Virtualization is the magic that makes cloud possible. It's like taking one physical server and splitting them into multiple virtual machines. Each virtual machine acts like a separate computer, but they all share the same underlying hardware. To master the cloud, you need to understand how virtualization works and how to manage virtual machines. Databases is where all the data lives in the cloud. They come in different flavors, like relational databases, such as SQL and no SQL databases. Now, as a cloud engineer, you'll be working with databases all of the time. You need to know how to design schemas, optimize queries, and keep data secure. Security is the most critical aspect of the cloud. With data breaches making headlines every single day, you can't afford to slack off on security. You need to know how to configure firewalls, manage access control, encrypt data, and monitor for threats. Security should be baked into every aspect of your cloud architecture design. Now, obviously, don't worry, don't feel overwhelmed. You don't have to learn all of these at once. Pick one, stick with it, and learn it well. 
Okay, so you've learned the cloud fundamental skills, got confidence with the core AWS services, but what really gets you paid the big bucks? Cloud security and DevSecOps. Now DevSecOps takes the principles of DevOps and injects security into every stage of the development process. It's not about bolting on security at the end, it's about making it an integral part of how you build and deploy applications. In the cloud, security is paramount. You're dealing with sensitive data, critical infrastructure, and a constantly evolving threat landscape. You can't afford to treat security as an afterthought. Now with DevSecOps, security becomes everyone's responsibility. Developers write secure code from the start, operational teams configure infrastructure securely, and security teams collaborate with both to ensure that security is baked into every aspect of the application development process. Now you might be asking, how can you even do DevSecOps other than just a cultural shift between different apartments? Well, you need to learn tools such as Sneak, who have kindly sponsored this video. Sneak is a developer-first security platform that integrates seamlessly with your AWS environment. It helps you find and fix vulnerabilities in your code, dependencies, containers, and of course, your infrastructure as code. Sneak empowers developers to drastically reduce the time it takes to find and fix security issues across the AWS application stack. For example, you can scan open source packages using Sneak's unique first-party integration with AWS Code Pipeline. You can also scan container images in AWS ECR and leverage base image upgrade recommendations. Sneak even detects insecure configurations in your AWS CloudFormation templates, Terraform, or even Amazon EKS files. And here is a quick demo of how Sneak can help you find and fix vulnerabilities. Now, as you can see, Sneak makes it easy to identify and patch vulnerabilities before they become a nightmare. And the best part is that it integrates with your favorite AWS tools like AWS Code Pipeline, Amazon ECR, and more, allowing you to build and run your applications securely on AWS. Now, with Sneak at your side, you can ensure your code ventures into the world fully dressed and ready for anything. Now, if you sign up with my link down below, you can get a free account for Sneak for a lifetime. Use sneak.co slash Lehman for your free Sneak account for an absolute lifetime. It's incredible. Now, remember, the world of code moves fast and a single oversight like a vulnerable dependency can lead to a ton of security vulnerabilities. But with DevSecOps practices and tools like Sneak, you can stay ahead of the game and deliver secure and reliable applications in the cloud. So don't just settle for DevOps, level up for DevSecOps, embrace the challenge, learn the skills and become a security champion in the cloud. It's the best investment that you can make in your career and in the future of your applications. Okay, so let's talk about AWS, which has over 200 services and making it a little bit of a maze to get your head around. But here is the thing, you don't need to learn everything. That's a rookie mistake. You wanna focus on the bread and butter, the core services that show up in practically every AWS project and architecture. And I'm talking about the VIPs of AWS, VPCs, IAM, EC2, Lambdas, S3, DynamoDB, CloudFront and RDS. These are the ones that you should be spending your time on. Master these and you'll be ahead of the game. You'll be surprised how many people out there don't know the differences between security groups and knuckles or what a root table is for. I mean, we're talking about grown adults here and they're absolutely missing the basics because they skip the fundamentals, but not you. If you zoom in on these core services and really understand how they work, you automatically be in the top 10% of cloud professionals. You'll be the one that everyone turns to when they need someone who actually knows their stuff. So don't get lost in the weeds of trying to learn every single AWS service. Stick to the essentials, the foundation that everything else is built on. Once you've got these down, you can start exploring the rest of what AWS has to offer. But trust me, if you can walk the walk with VPCs, IAM and EC2s, and of course the rest of the gang, you'll be miles ahead of those in this field. And that's where you want to be if you're serious about making it in the cloud. 
those services have come up in every single AWS project that I have worked on. Now, before the end of this video, I'm going to share with you a bonus skill, which has single-handedly been responsible for me making over six figures. So stay tuned for that. Now let's talk about another game changer in the cloud world, infrastructure as code or IAC. Gone are the days of manually setting up and configuring your cloud infrastructure. With IAC, you define your infrastructure using code, just like you would with your applications. Tools like AWS CloudFormation, Terraform and Ansible allow you to describe your infrastructure as code, version control it, and manage it like any other software project. This means you can automate your infrastructure deployments, ensure consistency across environments, and easily scale your resources up or down based on the demand. But here is the thing, to be effective with IAC, you need to have a solid foundation in programming. You don't need to be a fully fledged software engineer, but you should be comfortable with basic programming concepts and syntax. Which brings me to my next point, programming skills. As a cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, or cloud architect, you don't need to be a programming guru, but having a good grasp of programming fundamentals will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, for example, if you want to write effective IAC templates, you will need to understand concepts like variables, functions, and control structures. If you want to automate tasks or write scripts, you'll need to know your way around a language like Python or Bash. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but I'm not a programmer. I can't learn to code. Now, trust me, I've been there. But here is the thing. Programming is a skill like any other. It can be learned with practice and persistence. Start with the basics. Learn the fundamentals of a programming language like Python. Practice writing simple scripts and automating tasks. Now, as you get more comfortable, start exploring more advanced topics like object-oriented programming or functional programming. Now, the key is not to get overwhelmed. Take it one step at a time and don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. You can use Twitter, you can use Reddit, you can use Discord groups for help. And there are countless of resources out there from online tutorials to coding boot camps to communities. And here is the best part. Once you have a solid foundation in programming, you'll be able to pick up any new language and framework much more easily. Now I want to talk about the most important skill of all, building projects. You can learn all the theory in the world, but if you can't apply it to real world scenarios, it's not going to do you much good. When I was learning the cloud, I didn't just read books and watch tutorials. I got my hands dirty. I built projects and lots of them. From simple static websites to complex microservices architectures, I practiced applying my knowledge to real world problems. And let me tell you, it wasn't always easy. I ran into roadblocks. I got stuck. I made mistakes. But each time I learned something new, I figured out how to debug my code how to troubleshoot my infrastructure, how to make my applications more resilient and more scalable. But the real magic of building projects is that it forces you to think creatively. You have to figure out how to break a problem down into smaller pieces, how to design a solution that's both efficient and effective, and how to iterate and improve upon your work. It's a constant development of your thoughts, your creativity, your skills, and your project ideas. And here is the thing, the more projects that you build, the better that you get at it. You start to develop a sixth sense for what works and what doesn't. You start to anticipate problems before they even happen, and you become more adapted to finding solutions. So my advice to you is to build projects and lots of them. Start small, but think big. Don't be afraid to experiment, to try new things, to fail fast and learn from your mistakes. And don't just build projects for the sake of building them, build projects that solve problems. Build projects from your own ideas that makes a difference in your own life. Build projects that showcase your skills and your creativity and demonstrate your ability to think outside the box. And trust me, when you can point to a portfolio of projects that you've built, that you've poured your heart and soul into, that's when you really stand out in a job market. So to recap, the fundamentals are the networking, operating system, virtualization, databases, and security core AWS services, infrastructure as code, programming, and more importantly, building projects. But remember, it's not about learning everything at once. It's about building a strong foundation and then continuously expanding your knowledge and skills 
over time. Focus on the fundamentals, but don't be afraid to explore new areas. Build projects and challenge yourself. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.